please make welcome up uh, for his presentation from the engineering faculty for his uh, show us his PhD, uh, Swarm Intelligence for Swarm Robotics, Juan Rada Varela. Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is gonna be artificial intelligence, generally speaking, right? So the kind of problems we deal with in AI, it goes like this. So if you imagine myself as a blue circle over there, then I can only move forward and backwards. I am blindfolded. And my objective in life is to find the lowest valley in this set of mountains. Then I would start running up downhill, really happy about it, because uh, I'm doing really good. Then all of a sudden I could start going uphill, which is not that good, so I decided to turn back down, settle, and get to live the most disappointed life I could ever think of. Now, this is only one dimension. If you add me another dimension, now I can move left and right, and the problem becomes to find the darkest spot in this kind of problems, then it is more difficult. Now imagine for three or more dimensions how difficult it can get. Now, some intelligence is a set of techniques inspired by nature. We create algorithms that model the behavior of bee swarms, ant colonies, and even fish schools in order to solve these kind of problems. Uh, particle swarm optimization is the one I'm interested in. Uh, here we have a, 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 group, a population of particles that share information about the, about the problem, and then they move randomly towards the best position they found so far. Now, if this is this room, and this is a bunch of guys looking for the most beautiful girl around, then we would start texting each other. Well, every time we see a beautiful girl, we text each other where she is and how beautiful she is, and at the end, we will end up, uh, well, staring at the most beautiful girl, right? Well, this is a bit awkward, for a start. And the other thing is that there's surely more than one beautiful girl around. So you get the point about this. Now, Swarm Robotics, uh, it deals with coordination of large number of robots. Uh, its applications goes from exploration of unknown environments, search and rescue of victims, and mobile sensor networks, which is the one I'm interested in especially underwater environments. Now, the cool thing about this system is that it, it is a highly fault-tolerant system. That is, if I run out of credit on my mobile, then the rest of the group will be still able to, to find the most beautiful girl around. Now, what I want to do is to port this algorithm into real-world robotics. But in order to do so, we have to face some challenges, such as communication issues, localization of the robots because GPS do not work underwater, uh, overcome some theoretical assumptions, and some others. But now, if you think this is science fiction, then you better think again, because just this year, robots helped us find the black box of the plane that crashed going from Brazil to France, that crashed in the Atlantic Ocean. They also helped us find victims under the debris after the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan. And like this, many sensor networks had been deployed in volcanoes underground and in sea uh, in order to have a better understanding of earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcano eruptions. Well, that's it. Thank you. Congratulations, Juan. I thought that's, I thought that's very good. Um, you've got a remarkable ability to bring complicated concepts down in, way, in ways that we can understand them in our day-to-day -day life. It's, um, it's a rare skill, so congratulations for that. Thank you. It's quite easy, so. Thank you. 